let's go into the market rates what where we're at in the markets we have in the u.s markets this window all the way up let's see where is my yeah i just want to go this route one more moment there we go now i've got everything fluid and ready to go i haven't done the stream in a while it's been super super busy so i'll be reading these news articles and then cutting stream reading new set of most recent articles but yeah starting with the u.s market we have the Dow Jones, Dow Jones Industrial Average is up 1.56%. The NASDAQ Composite Index is up 1.69%. The S&P 500 Index is up 1.57%. The Global Dow Real-Time USD is up 1.18%. The Gold Continuous Contract is up 0.09%. Crude oil is up 2.94%. We have the Europe market, the FTSE 100 index is up 1.72%. The DAX is up 1.54%. The CAC 40 index is up 2.01%. The FTSE MIB is up 1.66%. The IBEX, IBEX 35 is up 1.43%. The Stock, six, uh, Stock Europe 600 index is up 1.71%. In the Asia market data, we have the Asia Dow is down. 0.10%. The Nikkei 225 is down 0.68%. The Hang Seng Index is up 0.34%. The Shanghai Composite is up, uh, is down 0.17%. Uh, S&P BSC Sensex is down 1.03%. FTSC Straits Times Index is up 0.07%. The S&P ASX 200 Benchmark Index is up 1.29%. The COSP Composite Index is down 0.19%. The currency, we've got the euro down 0.11%. The yen is up 0.38%. The British pound is down 0.81%. The Australia dollar is up 0.40%. The US dollar index is down, uh, sorry, up 0.23%. And the WSJ dollar index is up 0.19%. All right, all right. We have the rates markets. Oh, sorry. Let's go over to cryptocurrency. Bitcoin down 0.61% at $16,780 per BTC. Ethereum down 0.59% at $1,200. $9.35 USD per ETH. Uh, XRP down 2.48%. Uh, yeah, Monero. Uh, I'm going to go with Monero. Monero is up 1.36% uh, on Monero. In the rates markets, with the US 10 year Treasury note down 0 0.026. Germany 10 year down 0 0.008. Italy 10 year government bond is down 0 0.046. Spain 10 year government bond is down 0 0.018. The UK 10 year Gilt is down 0 0.025. The Japan 10 year government bond is up 0 0.062. In the futures market, we have the crude oil WTI is up 2.90%. The gold continuous contract is up 0.08%. The E mini NASDAQ 100 index continuous contract is up 1.52%. The E mini Dow continuous contract is up 1.53 percent the e-mini s p 500 future continuous contract is up 1.53 percent the silver continuous contract is up 0 0.06 and the bent crude oil continuous contract is up 2.76 percent um let's see heating natural silver platinum palladium palladium's down 0.3 almost 0.4 percent uh three and a quarter percent uh let's see yeah, let's go right into the first piece of news article I have here. Actually, no, wait, wait, that's what I was looking for. The Golden Continuous Contract is um, up 1.3%, so gold is uh, $1,826 per gold average ounce, right? I believe this is a gold Troy ounce. What have you, did they? Troy ounce or ounce, whatever. 
Yeah. All right. Go to the first piece of news here. This is from Braden Lindria, Cointelegraph. Vitalik Buterin reveals three huge opportunities for crypto in 2023. There's still plenty of room for innovation, according to Ethereum co-founder Vitalik Buterin. Ethereum co-founder Vitalik Buterin has shared three huge opportunities yet to be realized in crypto, mass wallet adoption, inflation, resistant stable coins, and Ethereum-powered website logins. During an interview with Bankless co-owner David Hoffman, Buterin shared his outlook for the crypto industry in 2023, responding to Hoffman's raised concern that the adoptive way for decentralized applications is now over and that there's less opportunity. Uh, there's less opportunity developers to come in and build new decentralized applications. Buterin instead shrugged off the limbo period that Hoffman alluded to, firstly suggesting that more developments need to be made on wall infrastructure to make crypto easier for everyday people to use and ensure that it is capable of onboarding billions of users. If you can make a wallet that billions a uh, billion people will use that's a huge opportunity the ethereum co-founder said secondly buterin said that creation of hyperinflation resistance uh of a hyperinflation resistant and globally accessible stable coin that can withstand all types of conditions both on chain and in the broader macro economy co macro economy will would be revolutionary for the industry if you can make a stable coin yeah this is just uh parroting you know that was just parroting what his main statement is um let's see buterin didn't uh Though it didn't offer any technical suggestions as how this could be achieved. Lastly, Buterin said any technical developments that contribute toward Ethereum taking login powers away from Facebook, Google, Twitter, and other centralized monopolies would ultimately enable Ethereum to capture more market dominance on internet-based applications. If you can get uh, signed in with Ethereum to, uh, to work, and if you can unseat Facebook and Google, Twitter as the login overlords of the internet, that itself is a huge opportunity, right? Uh, Buterin did, however, state that the opportunity to fill market gaps was becoming less obvious due to increasing competition and the mature maturation of the market. Uh, let's see, Ethereum's co-founder appears to have spent the last few weeks sharing his learnings and advice for crypto space, including his optimism about the years ahead for the industry. Uh, Buterin stated on December 5th that blockchain-based identity, uh, identity Decentralized autonomous organizations, DAOs, and hybrid applications also excite him about the future of Ethereum and decentralized technologies. A few days earlier on December 3rd, the Ethereum co-founder iterated the importance for traders to take a long-term view by focusing more on technical developments rather than on price. Following the collapse of FTX, Buterin advised traders and investors on November 21st to consider the level of human influence that can be exerted over a protocol and to put more trust in open, transparent code than humans. Let's see... Next article is from Coindesk. Let's go. Beyond to the moon. Oh, I thought that was taking out the ad part. Oh, here we go. So Visa proposes automatic payments using Ethereum layer two system, Starknet. It's from Shoria Malwa, writer for uh, Coindesk. Visa said stealth custodial wallets could use a unique account abstraction method to set up automatic recurring payments on Starknet as existing smart contracts do not currently support such steps. Payment processor Visa recently proposed a system known as account abstraction that uses uses a smart contracts uh can be some typo uh uses wait that uses a, a system known as account abstraction that uses smart contracts um to enable automated programmable payments on Ethereum per a crypto thought leadership post. The solution involves the creation of smart contract of a smart contract that acts as an intermediary between a user account and a contract account, allowing for the creation of a self custodial wallet that can make automatic recurring payments without requiring the active participation of the user. Such a move would allow recurring payments to be conducted entirely over blockchain networks. 
which currently are devoid of such capability. Visa said the company proposed deploying the system on Ethereum Layer 2 network, StarkNet. Currently, there are two types of accounts on the Ethereum network, externally owned accounts, EUAs, uh, controlled by a private key and uh, contract accounts, CAs, which are essentially smart contracts. EOAs can initiate uh, transactions, but key CAs cannot. However, by using account abstraction, it is possible to create a smart contract that can initiate transactions on behalf of an EOA, enabling the creation of a self-custodial wallet that can make automatic recurring payments, Visa said. Account abstraction AA is a proposal that aims to combine user accounts and smart contracts into a single type of account on the Ethereum blockchain. This is possible by allowing for a creation of validity rules for individual transactions. So basically to me, what this is uh, saying is, um, in my mind, right off the bat, is this is just a, uh, a step for a central power, like a bank, um, to have, a, have its own central smart contract and have um, paired wallets, um, transactional EOAs attached to it that maybe get registered to the contract and the contract itself can function uh, transactions for that EOA wallet address um, or that hash address that's registered with the contract. Um, so basically that's like um, the bank saying like, um, if a bank moves over and then like your bank is now like all on chain or something and the bank were like, this is a way we're gonna like um, freeze your assets or something like that. Um, and, and so you can't even actually transact with your own wallet because our bank is now in the future of, of how we do things, banks are using like utilizing smart contracts um, like this. That's really far out, but the, in in uh, brief off the bat, it's like this is like central power taking control of a decentralized um, system on a protocol of layer two Ethereum as an exploratory. So, one use case for AA is the creation of dele uh, delegatable accounts which allow for the automation of payments through the use of smart contracts with dele delegable account with a delegable account a user can delegate the ability to initiate a payment to a pre-approved smart see there you go see it's like i'm registering my wallet to your contract to just go ahead and like yeah yeah yeah, I, yeah you, know, you can take out this much money out of my out of my wallet um th this to me is like like Tell me you've tested this and you've brute forced, like, you know, tried to um, act these contracts and, and manipulate these contracts and, and cause vulnerabilities on these contracts. Because <laughs> the last thing you want is like someone's registered wallet, you know, to your banking smart contract, to your visa, you know, entitled smart contract to be backdoored, backdoored and drain drained everyone's wallet uh or like manipulate uh, uh, you know that's one thing i see uh right off the bat but that's the due diligence of uh testing on st t uh, test nets and um for all those things and uh um obviously like things like um no this is entirely different like reentrancy guards and certain capabilities maybe i don't really know to uh you know I'd have to look at the contract structure and really start talking in pools, dev pools about it and uh, destructuring to see what this, uh, you know, obviously if it's not going to be StarkNet, it's going to be a Solidity smart contract, so a Solidity code set. That's what I see here right off the bat. So I'll keep reading, but uh, anyways, yeah, initiate payment to a pre accrued smart contract known as the auto pay contract, Visa said. Here's how it would hypothetically work when a user visits a merchant website and agrees to allow for auto payments, the auto uh, co payment contract's address is added to the user's allow list. The merchant would then trigger a payment by calling the charge function of the auto payment contract, causing the user's account to initiate a payment that will be valid due to its presence on the allow list. As of Tuesday, Visa did not reveal any plans to use the system as part of its offered services. All right, let's go into the next one. Coin Telegraph here. Um, oh, well, I just didn't mean to do that. What is the relationship between blockchain and Web three? This is from Coin Telegraph. Uh, Jagjit Singh, I think. Writer for Cointelegraph, uh, what is the relationship between blockchain and Web3? Cointelegraph, are blockchain and crypto essential for Web3 cryptocurrencies and blockchain are the building blocks of Web3. However, the decentralized web also relies on technologies like AR, VR, IoT, and other unrelated to blockchain or digital currencies. 
Uh, the third generation of the internet known as Web3 is based on te uh, blockchain technology. However, technologies like machine learning, big data, artificial intelligence, AI, the re relationship, the internet of things, augmented reality, AR, virtual reality, VR, and others enable decentralized dApps, apps, uh, dApps to analyze information in a sophisticated human-like manner in a Web3 environment. For instance, virtual reality headsets will create an exceptional uh, shopping experience, allowing customers to interact with products before making a purchase. However, those technologies are not based on cryptocurrencies or distributed ledger technology, but aim to increase blockchain technology's efficiency. Furthermore, blockchain pay plays a significant role in building the infrastructure of Web3 by allowing organizations to decentralize Web2 services, including co cloud computing, social networking sites, and databases. Therefore, combining AI and blockchain technology will undoubtedly give organizations a better way to manage confidentiality data sets by validating the supplied data ai technology can quickly complete the process request and the smart algorithm will help make quick decisions regarding issuing funds or approving credit also the data sets can be effectively protected via the blockchain similarly other technologies such as ar and vr are crucial in defining the metaverse exploring novel ideas and elevating virtual experiences moreover cryptocurrencies eliminate the need for a reliable middleman by allowing web3 users like uh, uh, users to use tokens like Ether to send and receive money. That said, cryptocurrencies support peer-to-peer -peer payments and can serve as a digital native remittance method. Blockchains would lack the incentive system for network involvement without cryptocurrencies. Also, users wouldn't have anywhere to store the cryptocurrencies without crypto wallets. In addition, Web3 is intended to be permissionless, trustless, and open to all as it embraces the crypto ethos. Sim similar non-fungible tokens, e NFTs, enable users to um, transparently demonstrate proof of ownership for items like in-game assets, digital art, personal data, and others. And how is Web3 related to blockchain? Blockchain is a crucial technology that empowers the decentralized web and alters the fundamental dynamic of current version of the web in which businesses squeeze consumers for as much data as possible. Blockchain power tokens and sh uh, shared ownership address the fundamental issues with the centralized network's value is accumulated by a, central, a single organization then conflicts with its own stakeholders. In addition, data de independence is guaranteed by Web3 dApps through the use of blockchain technologies. Due to decentralization, users become the ultimate content owners as no centralized authority verifies data. Additionally, dApps use... Uh, sorry, dApps are altering decentralized applications, are altering the paradigms of community engagement and governance by allowing users to vote and give ideas, offering everyone an equal opportunity to participate in the project implementation. In addition to the above, blockchain supports the creation of cryptos, uh, crypto domains such as .eth, .crypto, and .dao. A decentralized crypto domain institutes a human readable address for a user's crypto wallet for an IP address. And the, uh, these Web3 domain names can be traded as NFTs, uh, non fungible token marketplaces. A decentralized domain name representing a blockchain address is desirable because it is a simple to remember address by for sending and receiving cryptocurrency similar to an email address. Um, yeah, most definitely we'll be able to start building websites attached to these domains with the advancements of Web 2 to Web 3 bridging and, and interfaces with um, even now like talking talks about like Web 4. Um, blockchain technology will increase the breadth of and Web 5 actually I've heard that too. Uh, blockchain technology will increase the breadth of Web3 accessibility with features like trustless payments, decentralized uh, governance, cross-chain interoperability in earning digital assets while playing games. While considering how blockchain changes the data structure in the back end of the web, it becomes clear that blockchain is the basis for Web3. A storage used to store a storage used to store and arrange data is called a data structure. It is a method of setting up data on a computer to keep it up to date and make it easily accessible. Uh, accessible. Because it offers cryptographic proof of a series of transactions, the role of blockchain in Web3 is crucial, especially in raising the level of trust among network users. That said, blockchain's governance layer allows two identified parties who don't trust one another to negotiate and complete deals online. In this style of governance, the blockchain protocol contains the rules for implementing modifications through code updates, developers submit amendments, and each node votes on whether to accept or reject the change without the intervention of third parties. Furthermore, blockchain-based dApps, domains, and websites allow decentralized interaction between users, uh, sorry, among users and applications leading to the expansion of Web3. For instance, Web3 applications like Brave Browser, which offers privacy enhancing and ad blocking feature, are example of decentralized web growth. Um, I've heard a lot of deba uh, debate about Brave browser i don't use it personally but uh there has a um a cryptocurrency attached to it called the bat bat 
Furthermore, Web3 is seamless and streamlined thanks to the improved capability of blockchain interoperability solutions like Polkadot, making it easy for consumers to switch between platforms or applications with one's favorite wallet. They may trade NFTs between networks and monitor the growth of their whole portfolio from one location significantly, pushing for Web3 adoption and more widespread blockchain use. Web3 gamers can gather and exchange NFTs across the metaverse thanks to the decentralization of games and allows uh, to retain the control of information and assets that we own. Blockchain-based games like Axie Infinity also enable players to make money by gathering cryptocurrencies as they play. Later, this cryptocurrency can be changed to fiat money. Uh, obviously, there's taxes attached to that and things like that. Uh, how many? How can companies prepare for Web3 World? After the, rising, after the rising market for NFT artwork and collectibles in 2021 in the metaverse land grab, 2022 web3 presents opportunities for innovative business models products and established organizations although traditional organization structures vary from company to company positions are best filled by individuals who can serve uh, best serve the interests of shareholders by swiftly and effectively establishing roles and permissions using nfts that reflect individuals rights and responsibilities decentralized autonomous organizations or DAOs can redefine hierarchy delegation and structure therefore uh, organizations should conduct sufficient uh, research to create competitive DAOs to switch their centralized systems to decentralized structure. In addition, companies can use tokenized assets that can be exchanged on a blockchain, which increase the asset's liquidity, and make it possible to transfer ownership of it. Uh, due to the fact that new entrants can instantly reach numerous networks of potential consumers by developing their applications on top of blockchain protocols, Web3 is likely to change the competitive dynamics. As a result, companies can give more value from a blockchain uh, blockchain's built-in user base of native token holders therefore businesses will need to develop innovative ways to safeguard their user networks by actively offering users the value they create however businesses should consider the possibility of future regulation when deciding how to position themselves strategically in relation to web3 more laws will pr probably follow as people turn to blockchain and cryptocurrency all right that's that extensive uh but that was a good one most definitely uh, let's go on to some Reuters news so we got some blockchain tech news I was uh, really harping upon, and we're going to go switch it over to some cryptocurrency news. Cryptocurrency is at the cro uh, crossroads of an uh, Anas Horribilis, if I pronounced that correctly, uh, by Vidya Ranganathan, writer for uh, Reuters Routers. Singapore and Reuters uh, borrow from Britain's, to borrow from Britain's uh, Queen Elizabeth 2022 is not a year in which cryptocurrency world shall look with uh, look back with undiluted ple uh, pleasure. Crashes, contagion, collapses came in such quick successions that investors were towards the end of the year asking very serious, uh, ex uh, serious existential questions. After all, the largest cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, has not kept its head above water for more than a week at a time and is down about three quarters from last November 69 peak, 69,000 peak. The market value of the 22,000 odd uh, tokens and coins is now... A, at less than a third of the peak, three trillion in November 2023. Uh, sorry, 2021, and many of them are uh, comatose, if outright dead. That's being a brutal reality check for an industry that kicked 2022 off with dreams of widespread mainstream institutional adoption of Bitcoin, suppl uh, suppl supplanting even gold as the world's largest inflation hedge, as well as endorsements from the likes of Tesla Inc. Chief Elon Musk in the uh, wild uh, celebration of big billion-dollar non-fungible tokens. Not only did cryptocurrencies get slammed by the Fed's uber hawkishness, their slide also triggered the crash of a stablecoin called Terra USD, that was wrought with a le uh, layman moment, as funds and brokers such as Celsius and Voyager went bankrupt, and what some saw as the final nail in the crypto coffin was the collapse of Sam Bankman Fried's FTX exchange last month, and why it matters. Unlike in 2017, when Bitcoin crash was just a specula uh, speculatory, just as speculatory, there are far fewer diehard crypto buffs predicting a bounce in this time. Rather, 2022 has become an I told you so case of regulators who largely maintain an arm's length from the crypto world as or even banned trading in cryptocurrencies. The European bank reckons Bitcoin's modest bounce this month as an artificially induced uh, ga uh, last gasp before the road to irrelevance. Indeed, one extenuating factor this year has been how mainstreaming finance has most es mostly escaped contagion. The excess, the uncontrolled lending and fudging of billions of dollars have happened overwhelmingly between uh, within the crypto ecosystem. At the same time, the idea of that decentralized finance and private crypto coins can operate in the shadows of the traditional banking system and thrive now appears delusional. At retail and institutional 
As retail and institutional investors lose trust in crypto operators as a host of policymaker uh, voices and even crypto barons are joining U.S. SEC Chair Gary Gensler in calling for regulation. What does 2023 hold? U.S. Uh, UBS strategist James Malcolm points to the increasing correlation between cryptocurrencies and microcap U.S. stocks as testament to how Bitcoin and other tokens could survive on the fringes as a niche, diverse asset in the investment portfolios. It's a way to say this thing is going to curl up and die completely because there are elements of which can be used in other areas and there is probably a modest cryptocurrency market which will continue to thrive on the margin of financial markets, he says. Yet the sort of regulation that investors need to feel safe dealing with crypto broker Brokers and exchanges, be it transparency or capital adequacy, could take months, if not years, to implement. Some asset managers are looking at this as a 10- to 5-year, 15-year journey to digital assets becoming fully mainstream. Morgan Stanley said in a note sum summarizing the bank's discussion with the crypto industry, next year could meanwhile see traditional finance, uh, see traditional financial world use the crypto malaise, malaise to up its game, snap up platforms and assets in the blockchain world, issue tokenized bonds and stocks, or maybe even roll out a more centralized, uh, a more central bank digital currencies. As UBS Malcolm says, it might just go to show that crypto was meant to be more an evolutionary than a revolutionary development of in financial markets. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's right. Um, it's both. Let's go to ABC News and the technology of cryptocurrency's wild roller coaster ride back in this past 2022. So, was 2022 the year cryptocurrency died? Experts weigh in it's from uh, Samara Lin, writer for ABC News. On the go, cryptocurrency has always been volatile, said one economic economics expert who spoke with ABC News, but 2022 was a stomach-churning roller coaster ride for investors and major players in the market. The prices of popular cryptocurrencies plummeted throughout 2022. Moreover, some cryptocurrency companies and their founders are facing bankruptcy or even the threat of imprisonment. Um, uh, let's see, Bitcoin. I want to jump around here, actually. Uh, experts included David Yarmack, a professor of finance in the New York University Stern School of Business, said crypto's free fall started after investors began selling off digital assets in response to the Federal Reserve's interest rate hikes. The market took a nosedive after Celsius Network, a former cryptocurrency lending company, announced it was pausing all withdrawals and transfers between accounts in order to honor overtime withdrawal obligations. Let's see, uh, Celsius had roughly 1.7 million uh, customers and more than 10 billion in assets. Um, let's see, we got Bitcoin down 62%, Ether down 65.3%, Cardano down 75%, 48% on Binance coin. Um, uh, you know, Tether's Tether. <laughs> Um, point XRP is down 51%, 52% on Dogecoin, 62% on Chainlink, 47% on Litecoin, Bitcoin Cash is down 75%. Now, cryptocurrency has been volatile throughout this history and has experienced a large number of sharp rises and falls, Yermick said. Told uh, Yermick told ABC News, what really affected the market, he said, was the collapse of Terra USD, a payment platform for so-called stablecoins. Stablecoins take a hit. Stablecoins are a form of digital currency backed by another form of cur uh, currency like the U.S. dollar or a commodity like gold. According to experts who spoke with ABC News, they are designed to be be less volatile than other forms of cryptocurrencies, but some of the heaviest traded stablecoins saw a massive drop in value in 2022. The most notable hit was the collapse of the Luna token and its associated TerraUSD uh, stablecoin. TerraUSD's price fell from $116 in April as a fractional uh, to a fraction of a penny, and the company had a market cap of over $40 billion. Yermick uh, uh, summed up why this particular collapse contributed to the, market's cri uh, the crypto market's crash. The Luna token and the US, uh, Terra USD stablecoin were two assets that were promoted by the same issuer and were linked to another, well, to one another by a trading algorithm. Many people on the Terra platform had taken out loans in stablecoin and posted to the Luna tokens as collateral when Luna's value began to drop in the context of the overall market decline and it, it, uh, impaired the collateral of many of stablecoin loans. Many of the borrowers in turn couldn't repay these loans because they had used the stablecoin to purchase other investments that had themselves dropped in value. The interconnections among all of these transactions amounted to a death spiral that dragged down Luna and Terra USD simultaneously that had negative effects on many investors' portfolios. Bill Starkov, an NFT and crypto entrepreneur and founder of Apocalyptic Apes LLC, who is known as online as uh, Fiddy.eth, said Luna's demise was inevitable. If you looked at Luna and watched it and you understood what it does, it was very inflated, it was very high, he told ABC News. 
let's see layoffs and bankruptcies obviously yeah the downfall of uh luna uh you know i'm uh, sorry ftx let's see crypto outlook for 2023 uh it's always been a risky investment according to an economic stockbroker peter skiff i don't think they have any underlying value skiff also or shift skiff i don't know who also hosts peter skiff show podcast about digital currency there's no real wealth that's being created out of crypto, he says. Money is just transferring from the people who buy it to the people who sell it, and it's not even a zero-sum game. It's a negative game because it's there's so much cost, you know, that's involved in the process, but it's an unfortunate that so much capital has been wasted and so many companies have been formed around crypto and blockchain. It's all a complete waste. According to Euromac, one shouldn't confuse crypto for what happened to FTX. FTX is an offshore operation run by very inexperienced people who seem to have behaved very badly, he explained. The fact that they were trading crypto is a very is a little beside the point. They could have been trading real estate or stocks and bonds or whatever. They have no accounting, no inter internal controls. They're very irresponsible with the money that was entrusted to them by their customers. But it's not to say that everyone behaves this way in the crypto universe. Starkov said FTX's crisis is unfortunate because a lot of people got hurt. Even despite a tumultuous year of cryptocurrency, he says people have made money with crypto that will keep attracting investors. If you look at where people brought cryptocurrency in from, they're still on profit, he said. If you brought if you bought ETH at $80, $9, if you bought Bitcoin at 1000 or 2000 you're still sitting at $17,000 volatility uncertainty, he said. It's not um, endemic to cryptocurrency. We have the same thing with the stock market. We have the same thing with real estate market, he added. All right, so that's that. From ABC News. Why is that crossing all the way down to the bottom? Boom. Was it 2022 the year cryptocurrency died? Experts weigh in. Apparently not. Let's see. Coindesk. Crypto Twitter delves into strange sloppy side of Trump's NFT collection. This is from a news analysis with Coindesk from writer Cam Thompson. Online sleuths analyze blockchain data and assets in the former president's NFT collection, finding evidence of stolen and shady wallet addresses, painting a picture of how the digital collectibles came to be. Uh, so, so stolen art and shady wallet addresses. Uh, this weekend's episode of Saturday Night Live began with a skit poking fun at former President Donald Trump's recently released meme-worthy non-fungible token NFT collection. Seems like a scam, and in many ways it is, said uh, James Austin Johnson, who played the 45th uh, president in the show's cold open. While well, the mainstream media had eagerly picked up the story on the collection for its comedic value, the popularity of the Trump digital cards was continued to climb since the collection dropped on Thursday, selling out within 24 hours. According to the data from OpenSea, the collection's volume at 6,658 Ether, ETH, or about $7.8 million at the time of publishing, its floor price, which started at $99, has been hovering around 0.3 ETH, or $350. The collection features 45,000 tokens in the style of baseball cards in each collectible. Trump wears a different costume linked to a rarity element that's a, that allows users to enter a sweepstakes to win prizes like a zoom call with the former president or a cocktail hour at, at mar-a-lago in the wake of the project's apparent success internet sleuths have dug deep into the project and the parties behind the wallet addresses associated with trump's collectibles among the nuances and inconsistencies alleged on twitter the company had uh, that created the collectibles is hoarding a large amount of them that the project poorly uh, relies on stock imagery and that most of the buyers open new wallets without holding any cryptocurrency, sticking them with an NFT and no way to derive any future value from them. The strange case of 1,000 NFTs. Over the weekend, Twitter user NFT Herder noticed something strange about a large number of the rarest NFTs in the collection. The user posted a thread explaining the nature of the transaction data, the contracts involved in the mint. According to the data from Polyscan, Polygon's version of Etherscan, Donald Trump admin wallet minted 1,000 tokens to a Gnosis uh, safe wallet, a multi-signature smart contract wallet that relies, uh, requ sorry, requires a handful of users associated with the tokens to approve any asset movement. While the contract, uh, while the, while the collect Trump cards site said that 44,000 of the 45,000 tokens created an in initial series would be available for users to mint, it did not specify what would ha happen to the remaining 1,000 tokens. Where another project might save those assets for a later date to revive demand. Data suggests that the administration wallet holds the remaining minted 1,000 tokens. Um, so yeah, there's a, a tweet post there about it. After the collapse of Three Arrows Capital, the crypto hedge fund-backed NFT collection Starry Night moved its tokens to a Gnosis vol uh, safe wallet along with other valuable assets. It was likely done out of caution to hold the assets in one place to prevent any singular actor from moving these out of the wallet. 
the Trump, uh, we, you can talk about Gnosis multi uh, sig vaults and wallets um, in a future article at some point. The Trump trading card site specified that there was a strict limit of 100 Trump digital cards per purchaser household, meaning that an individual or a group who did not have to abide by the rules for the general public was able to pick up a large swath of the NFT pool. In addition, the mystery wallet isn't uh, full of second rate NFTs. It's it minted 26 of the 26 percent of the rarest one of one tokens and 28 percent of the autograph trading cards, according to the NFT herder. These are the most valuable and expensive assets in the collection, respectively, comprising 0.4 and 0.16 of the total tokens in the collection. NFT herder told Coindesk that they do not. Uh, that not only do the wall owners have the ability to inflate the price floor of the collection, but they also could have the ability to rig sweepstakes and alter the competition. It was, uh, if this was a 10,000 unit collection about monkeys, the whole discord would be blowing about how this is a rug and scam and that the team is holding one fourth of the most rare supply of the NFT herder, the curious mark and maker of the art. While people have been digging into the wall addresses and collection sweepstakes, other Twitter users were delving into dig pop culture digital artist Mark uh, Clark, sorry, Clark Mitchell and the artwork he created for the collection. On-chain TV founder Morgan Sarkins, uh, Sarkissian tweeted an image of one of the collectibles featuring the 45th president in a spacesuit that seemed to still have a visible water watermark from shutterstock uh wow huh all right she also uncovered an adobe watermark and another token listed in the collection and why didn't just buy the licensing if they wanted to do that anyways other Twitter users have found inconsistencies in the artwork with some of the creative assets used to build the collection apparently taken from stock images or uh, Amazon costumes. While Mitchell, Mitchell has worked on other projects such as artwork for Disney, Hasbro, and Marvel, this isn't his first NFT project. Web researcher and Twitter user Value Manser uncovered that Mitchell also did the artwork for Sylvester Stallone's Sly Guy NFT collection that never launched according to the Digital Collectibles website. Collection included similar creative assets such as drawings of the actor paired with exclusive access, uh, access to events such as Ultimate Stallone Experience, a dinner hosted with, by Stallone for token holders. Mitchell Sarkinson, Value Mancer, and the Sly Guy NFT collection did not respond to Coindesk at, by the time, uh, by the press time. So the shiny new wallets with no crypto. While NFT collections often attract a wide range of buyers with various stake in the game, Trump's NFT collection had a large number of buyers with appear to be new to digital collectibles. According to the data, nearly 12,900 users that minted Trump NFTs, about 9,300 did not hold any cryptocurrency in the wallet for gas fees. The fee all uh, users pay for a transaction on a blockchain. If a holder has no balance of either Matic or WETH, he is a no gas holder, which means he can't list his NFT for sale until he... Uh, and get some balance to his wallet. The Dune dashboard shows this means that 72% uh, of buyers were likely purchasing NFTs for the first time. The number of tokens held by uh, holders with no gas is 21,420, according to Dune Analytics, which is one Twitter user pointed out may be stuck due to more advanced structure of trading on Polygon. It's uh, more. <laughs> Number of tokens held by users with no gas. Okay. It's more like 20,000 set of four, uh, 45,000 said Twitter Warner staff uh, citing the data as one of the reasons why the tokens skyrocketed in trading volume. Warner did not respond to Coindesk by the uh, press time in a harsh crypto winter where NFTs are already subject to market vulnerabilities. Celebrities releasing successful NFT projects are funding, but through ventures seems like a promising sign. However, when the project is excluded, Ex executed before fully working its kinks out, it does not serve as a vehicle for mass adoption. Instead, it can onboard a new user base uh, that is not familiar with cryptocurrency or steps needed to make a sound purchase, analyze blockchain data or regula for re regulators and fund wallet transactions. As the pro uh, projects like these continue to rise in popularity, it's important to educate holders, dig into the details and look beyond the hype. Um, I mean, to me, yeah, those are very valid points. And at the same time, it's still it's still amazing uh that you know well is it really amazing but i mean it's forty five thousand units that sold out at like a hundred dollars a unit so um at this time when nothing really is even moving in nfts and you know things are but um they uh succeeded at moving forty five thousand nft units being minted out uh fairly quickly as well from my understanding Let's keep going. News from Bloomberg Law. The Board Ape Yacht Club NFT Creators Advanced Trademark Lawsuit 1. Rogers legal test doesn't apply. A judge finds order denying dismissal also uh, rejects anti-SLAPP motion. 
Board Ape Yacht Club, non-fungible creator, token creator, Yuga Labs, Inc.'s trademark infringement lawsuit against two artists who allegedly stole, uh, sold, un, sorry, not sold, sold unauthorized copycat NFTs depicting digital ass, uh, images of apes survived a motion to dismiss and allegations it was brought to suppress the artist's speech. U.S. District John, uh, does John F. Walter denied Ryder Rips and Jeremy Cahen's motion to dismiss the suit on December 16th, ruling that, that a trademark free speech balancing framework known as the Rogers test doesn't apply to allegedly copied NFTs. Walter also denied Rips and Cahen's anti-strategic lawsuit against public participation motion, which argued the lawsuit was attempting to suppress protected speech and criticism of racist uh, dog whistles allegedly embedded in the Bored Ape NFTs. Bored Ape NFT, the Bored Ape NFT collection released in 2021 depicts a cartoon profile picture of apes and achieved enormous popularity after being endorsed by celebrities and by like Justin Bieber and Paris Hilton. The NFTs had generated in more than $2 billion in total sales. Yuga Labs brought the lawsuit to the U.S. District Court for the Central District of California in June, alleged alleging that Rips scammed consumers into purchasing fake board apes and a, board ape NFTs using Yuga Labs to register trademarks. Rips, a visual artist and designer, said that his NFTs called RR slash Basie uh, critiques neo-Nazi and alt-right imagery found in the real board ape collection. Louis Tom Pros of Wilmer Cutler Pickering Hale and Door LLP, who represents Rips and Cahen, said the artist will continue fighting the suit as it proceeds to discovery and trial. The tri uh, this was protected um, First Amendment expression and artistic criticism that Ryder was engaged in, and we look forward to proving that, Tom Pros said, uh, told Bloomberg Law. Rips sought dismissal based on the uh, Rogers test, a legal doctrine that allows unauthorized use of a trademark as long as it is artistically relevant and doesn't explicitly mislead consumers. But the judge was unconvinced, finding that the RR Basie NFTs do not express an idea or a point of view, but instead points to the same images associated with the original board ape collection. This means that Rogers test shouldn't apply, Walter said. Even if the court did apply the test, Walter found Rips' use of the board ape trademarks, including a skull logo, wasn't artistically relevant. Although there is a low bar for artistic relevance on plaintiff, as plaintiff uh, points out, it is not infinitely low, the judge wrote. Our Basie NFTs are also explicitly misleading because they use the same trademarks in the same NFT marketplaces, Walter noted. In a pending case involving Jack Daniels and dog toys, the U.S. Supreme Court will consider whether the Rogers test should apply to ordinary consumer products. Rip's anti-SLAPP uh, motion failed because Yuga Labs' lawsuit was based on the commercial use of a trademark, not on Rip's criticism of the board ape NFTs, Walter said. A Yuga Labs spokesperson said in a statement to Bloomberg Law that the ruling rightly moves the case forward. Rips and Cahen intentionally misled customers to, and made millions by using Yuga's intellectual property to market and sell a copycat, uh, to sell a copycat NFTs. We'll continue to prove these facts as the case progresses, the spokesperson said. Fenwick and West LLP represents Yuga Labs. In the case is Yuga Labs versus Rips. Um, let's see updates. Yeah, so that's basically it there. Um, yeah, most definitely the Rips case is being. Um, probably ripped apart uh, by Yuga Labs. At this point, seeing as it's uh, now moving forward. I don't know why he made that collection. I don't know why Rips decided to make that. I get the video part, but I don't, I don't know why he... Anyways, Savannah Fortis. I don't get myself sometimes, but I don't. I just I definitely don't get why he did that. Uh, one third of singles are ready to date in the metaverse. Survey, Savannah Fortis. Data from a new survey from dating.com says the metaverse can help propel dating into the future, especially as avatars become more reflective of users. Online dating has become a, a commonplace activity in modern day romance. Data from Statista forecasted nearly 280 million online dating users by 2024. Now with data from a recent survey conducted by dating.com, an online matchmaking platform, the numbers say many singles are ready to take their search for love into the metaverse. According to the survey, those looking for love continue to turn to technology with 33% of singles planning on to date in the metaverse. The survey highlighted that the use of metaverse avatars can help put an emphasis on communication and digital intimacy before in-person discovery. Moreover, the metaverse is a borderless um, is a borderless world, which can't trigger singles to meet, which can trigger singles, which can trigger singles to meet from anywhere. Such a uh, with such advancements in dating app technology in the metaverse, more 
daters are open to making connections that span different cities, countries, and even continents. The survey revealed that one third of all res uh, respondents said they are open to relationships with people not in their local geography region. This comes as an additional data finds consumers' interest in the metaverse in an upward trend. Data from businesses and technology uh, strategy advisor Cap Gemini says more than 90% of consumers are metaverse curious. Digital identity and more specifically identity in the metaverse has been a major talking point for both users and developers over the last year. As various industries in the real world are stepping into digital reality, the tools users have available to piece together a digital identity after increasing, whether it be through wearables from a legacy brand or owning land in virtual reality, our digital selves have the potential to represent a lot about who we are and our status. However, as more personal data is given over to digital real reality, or reality, um, in order to make the most realistic version of users, the risk of uh, identity theft and other exploits increases. A recent survey from Kasper, Kaspers, uh, Kaspersky revealed metaverse exploitation and abuse are projected to rise in the next coming year. All right, let's keep going. Cointelegraph. Animoca Brands is the most funded metaverse developer in 2022. So it says NASDAQ, I don't know, uh, new data from, yeah, so it says uh, NASDAQ research revealed that over the last investors were keener to back late stage industry leaders such as Animoca brands compared to early stage startups. This is from Savannah Fortes, writer for Cointelegraph. Crypto bear market has also been called a builder's market by many leading figures and companies in the industry. New data from NASDAQ reveals that investors had this mindset as they continue to sink money into Web3, particularly metaverse-related projects. According to the data, over the last 20, 216 metaverse funding deals were completed, totaling out to nearly $2 billion in funding. At the top of the funding pool were support-based services, aka the main components for building. Digital architects, game designers, AI developers, content creators, and custom metaverse services were suddenly needed to build metaverse experiences. Animoca Brands, a major metaverse ecosystem developer, was revealed to have done the most metaverse deals over the last year. With 15 closed deals, the company received over $564 million in funding in 2022. It also recently announced that its plant that it plans to launch a billion dollar metaverse fund for developers in the space. The report said that larger metaverse platforms receive more attention from investors this year, though this paves the way for smaller, more niche projects in the future. According to NASDAQ, especially those with open metaverse plans will have the upper hand. Looking forward, the report says uh, support services, AI and avatar firms will continue to see major investment. Additionally, the expansion of open metaverse platforms will define the next phase of development along with improved economic models and usability in GameFi. 2021 was the year of non-fungible token, the non-fungible token NFT. This year could similarly be looked at as the year of the metaverse. It came uh, as it came in second place in the Oxford Dictionary World of the Year. Both existed prior to their respected, uh, respective booms. However, this was the year when developers, brands, and consumers jumped on board and masses. In fact, research even shows that the metaverse is a key factor in long-term NFT success. Another recent survey revealed that over 90% of consumers are curious about the metaverse and how it will shape their digital experiences. All right, Animoca Brands is the most funded fun metaverse developer in 2022 from a NASDAQ research report. So basically we've gone into blockchain news, crypto news, um nft news some metaverse news now we're gonna switch it over right switch over to some stock finance news uh tech piece of news i'm gonna close out the stream for the day amazon stock is now down 50 percent this year and is at a 52 week low this is from brian salzi uh, anchor editor at large for yahoo finance amazon stock is sucking wind into 2023 as investors fret about still bloated costs and what is shaping up to be a disappointing holiday shopping season shares of the tech di check giant check uh, tech giant are now hovering as a, at a fresh 52 week low and down 50 0.3 percent year to date according to yahoo finance data the stock is rivaling dreadful performances from its partners to the closely followed fang f-a-a-n-g facebook meta apple Amazon, Netflix, and Google, complex as Meta platforms, Meta has suffered a 63% drop in Netflix, and FLX has plunged about 53%. The stock has shed about 12% in December, alone pressured by more re uh, more recently by a lackluster govern government retail sales report for November. Consistent with our recently published 2023 out outlook report, we are lowering our estimates and price target to Amazon in the wake of several pro uh, proprietary 
data ends that suggest ongoing softness in the retail, online retail and cloud computing demand. Evercore SI tech analyst Mark Mahani warned in a client note this week, we have cut our 2023 and 2024 revenue estimates by 4% and 5% and our 2023 and 2024 operating income estimates by 9% and 8% and are now below the street. Uh, not... Not helping sentiment on Amazon is its own operating performance coming into the peak holiday season. Amazon announced on October 27th that missed third quarter analyst estimates as top line growth continued to cool and cost estimates uh, remain elevated. For the four fourth quarter, Amazon guided to between $140 billion and $144 billion instead of the $155 billion when uh, then projected by analysts. Shares were hammered by nearly 10% the following day. In November, Amazon then reportedly lay, uh, began laying off around 10,000 workers in an effort to get its cost structure under control. Mahaney's peers on the street have also uh, have a cautious short-term view on Amazon. We believe that Amazon has the most downside in our mega cap average given an exposure to inflationary cost headwinds and a potential impact from slowing consumption. Jeffrey's tech analyst Brent Thill wore in a note to clients. All right, so... Maybe, um, I don't know, going into 2023, you have to see what Q1 really is bringing. Um, we will say it's going to be economically worse, so we'll see. And um, then it might be shopping time for some for Amazon stock at a low floor point. The data scientist said Jack Dorsey told her Twitter was defenseless against a takeover by Elon Musk and the company should never have gone public. This is from Kate Duffy, writer for Yahoo Finance. Since I'm uh, kind of tech finance news, Jack Dorsey said Twitter was defenseless against Elon Musk's acquisition per a data scientist. Emily Gorsensky said she exchanged messages with Twitter co-founder about Musk's involvement. Dorsey said Twitter should have never gone public and that anyone can buy it per Gorsensky. Jack Dorsey said Twitter has no defenses against Elon Musk acquiring a company in October, according to a data scientist and activist, Emily Gorsensky said she sent Dorsey a direct message via Twitter on October 4th about why he decided to hand the platform over to Musk. She said, she, um, over to Musk. She said, she told him it could have been so much more. Gersensi, who shared images and screenshots from ins uh, with, ins with Insider to confirm her claims, told Dorsey he gave Twitter to a charlatan who was either playing an act for fun or chucking away the best of Twitter, adding that the employees who lost their jobs deserve better. Uh, better. Dorsey replied, saying these issues were expected to happen regardless of whether he was involved or not. According to Gorsensky's screenshots of the conversation posted on their Mastodon account, the Twitter co-founder told her it didn't matter whether Musk or a hedge fund took over the platform. It was only a matter of time per the screenshots provided by Gorsensky. Twitter has no defenses, uh, Dorsey said in a message to Gorsensky, the screenshots. So Gorsensky told Dorsey she wished the takeover could have been handled with grace and noted that Twitter had some of the best staff and very important discipline. Uh, disciple, uh, disciplines, yeah. I agree with you, but literally no option as an independent company. We should ever, ha we should have never gone public. Anyone can could buy. No choice in the matter. Dorsey wrote in a message to Gorsensky per screen the screenshots. Twitter went public in November 2013 when Dick Costolo was CEO. In response to Gorsensky's questions about whether it hurt to see Twitter go like this, Dorsey replied, "Of course." Gorsensky told Insider that Dorsey started following her on Twitter around five years ago, adding that she wasn't sure why, because she didn't know him. Over the years, Gorsensky has contacted Dorsey via Twitter DMs to criticize and praise him for what he had done with the company. She said, most of the time he ignored me, though not every time. I do not know why he responded this time, Gorsensky said. Insider was unable to reach Dorsey for comment. All right, so data scientist said that Jack Dorsey told her Twitter was defenseless against a takeover by Elon Musk and the company should have never gone public. Go on to the BBC, some BBC news here. Elon Musk only blue tick users vote in Twitter poll on policy. Elon Musk has said Twitter will only allow accounts with a blue tick to vote on changes. So you got to pay. You got to pay now $11 to vote. <laughs> Elon Musk. I mean, it's like it's kind of like it's like a it's like a non chained NFT like incentive. Like you got to have this NFT to vote in the DAO. You got to have this crypto to vote in the DAO. Got to have this blue check uh, monthly cost to vote in the, in the whatever Twitter based. Elon Musk has said Twitter will only allow accounts with a blue check with a blue tick to vote on changes to pol uh, to policy after a majority of users voted for him to quit. I mean, what happened to that? 
He, I mean, they voted it basically like he said he was going to adhere to quitting, I guess, right? Mr. Musk launched a Twitter poll asking if he should step down as chief executive. 57.5% uh, of users voted yes. Since then, he has not commented directly on the result of the poll, but he has said that Twitter will alter its users so that only people who pay for the subscription can, can vote on a company policy. Um, so the company's just going to put out policy? I don't know. One user claimed that so-called bots appeared to have vo voted heavily on the poll about Musk, Mr. Musk's role at the firm. Mr. Musk said he found the claim interesting. The billionaire had said when he ran the poll that he would abide by the result. If he quit as a chief as chief executive, he will remain as Twitter's owner. Bruce Daisley, former vice president of Twitter, compared any potential of change to that of a football manager. The chairman still remains and Elon Musk is going to be that ever-present voice on the back and back of the room, he told BBC's Today, uh, today program. However, Mr. Musk's intentions remain unclear, although a U.S. broadcaster CNBC tweeted on Tuesday that Mr. Musk is actively searching for a new chief executive for Twitter. Mr. Musk responded that two laughing, uh, with two laughing emojis. Uh, in response to a tweet saying, Twitter blue subscribers should be uh, the only ones that can vote in policy-related polls, we actually have skin in the game, Mr. Moss said. Good point. Twitter will make that change. Twitter's paid for verification system has rolled out for a second time last week after it launched was posed. The service costs $8 per month or $11 for people using the Twitter app on Apple's devices and gives subscribers a blue tick. Previously, a blue tick was used as verification tool for high-profile accounts such as a badge of authenticity and was free. On Monday, Mr. Moss held a poll on his uh, on his future as chief executive, more than 7.5 million users voted and majority backed him stepping down. Uh, let's see. While the poll was running, he replied to, yeah, so we get it. I don't, you know, uh, I kind of want to just get off this topic now. Um, I just want to like hear the technology, something about SpaceX, poll is running, such as your replacement chief executive. Um, I was like kind of thinking more about like what is the voting policy the voting is more about like policies they'll roll out and things like that but um let's see this is kind of backstory stuff um this is all just backstory stuff i really don't all right anyways i was more looking to like maybe they'll talk about like i was more interested to see if they'll talk about like you know what kind of if twitter like noted like you know these are kind of like policy things that you know as a blue check and stuff and it was like any interactions was just kind of like um Putting me into this next article. Yahoo Finance. Krispy Kreme CEO Robert still uh, will start frosting and filling donuts within the next... Uh, robots will start frosting and filling donuts within the next 18 months. So as we're going into technology articles before closing out this stream, basically. Yep. Um, Krispy Kreme is aiming to cut time in his donut production line through automation. Probably within the next 18 months, you'll see some automation starting to go into the frosting, the filling, the sprinkles, and even the packaging. Krispy Kreme CEO Mike Tattersfield told Yahoo Finance Live um in an above video here i'm gonna pause so the addition of robots is part of an effort to maximize the fresh hub and spoke model opportunity in the united states and increase points of access to deliver fresh daily dfd to grocery stores convenience stores quick serve restaurants and other locations in this with this model customers can get full-size donuts produced that day locally without going to a krispy kreme location we've got some pretty big factory stores we do 12,000 points of access uh, today, we get fresh donuts globally, Tattersfield said, emphasizing the, um, the major undertaking it is to get so many fresh donuts to the various locations. You need to start looking at what the automation capacity of that is because it's going to, um, to the grocers, it is going to the convenience shops. By 2022 fiscal year and Krispy Kreme estimated that it will have roughly 5,400 points of access in 30 countries, bringing it approximately $475 million in total revenue. By 2026, it's projecting more than 12,000 points of access in 20, uh, 45 countries that plans to bring more than $660 million in revenue. Meanwhile, the automated lines, which could produce 18% of crispy cream donuts within the next 18 month period are expected to result in $2 million of annual savings and a $6 million, on a $6 million investment. Taking the repetitive task out of the business for employees, JP Morgan analysts, uh, John Ivan Ivanko, who has an overweight rating on Krispy Kreme stock and lowered its target price to $13 from its $15 last week, noted that the donut company currently spends more than $100 million on donut production labor in the U.S., in, uh, of which $60 million is related to post-production labor, and that includes uh, inline icing, inline filling, and traying boxing functions. 
which can be automated. Despite these automation plans, though, Tattersfield stressed that Krispy Kreme employees, also known as Krispy Kremers and Isomaniacs employees, behind its uh, insomnia cookies business are still at the core of the business with the intention to cut out tedious tasks. Let's see. We're still going to continue to drive the experience side with our Krispy Kremers and insomnia insomnia insomniacs okay well uh, so I'll, i always find that when companies do a great job they're balancing in how they try to do that and you get to uh, you try to get to the repetitive task out of the business he said in a competitive environment to recruit the <coughs> main uh, <coughs> and maintain talent terrace field said the ability to grow as an employee is what sets someone apart it is really about the growth opportunity explain when you're in a company of our size that even today is just 400 Plus, producing donut shops with a long trajectory of growth, that growth across industry becomes a very attractive proposition. I love to see that our donut shop managers are now owners. All right, so automating Krispy Kreme. Let's go. Let's go into two last articles here from the BBC. A cargo holding aircraft with no pilots on board from technology. Um, was Riker, from writer, reporter Michael Dempsey, the BBC. So, Sivlin Rangelov sports an impressive beard. It's eight years worth of growth, he says. The beard dates back to when he and his younger brother, an aerospace engineer by training, formed Dronomaniacs, uh, jo oh, Dronamics, and your, uh, your answer to the emerging market of cargo drones. He agreed with his brother, Constantine, Constantin, or Constantine, I don't know, that they, um, would only shave their beards after the first flight of the drone they've been building in their native Bulgaria. Uh, at the time, he established drone, drone dynamics. Big tech giants like Amazon were experimenting with drone deliveries to domestic addresses, but Mr. Rangelov never believed in the concept of personal goods delivered by the drone. The practical difficulties of flying a drone right up to someone's front door were obvious to Mr. Rangelov. We couldn't buy to the concept of small drones. We took a different approach. This take on drone delivery will bear fruit when the prototype cargo aircraft takes to the air. Looking very much like a t conventional, conventional like aircraft, but without a pilot's cabin, the drone combines cell economics in terms of cheap electronics with the ability to land on short runways, says Mr. Rangeloff. It will be known as the Black Swan. Here in Bulgaria, air cargo means one large aircraft offloading goods into a truck, uh, which then goes to a sorting center where the delivery is broken down for the next stage of its journey to individual sites. He thinks taking a smaller load to a short airstrip closer to the fin final recipient will cost will cut costs and take trucks off the road. There are 3,000 airstrips across Europe, and that's a lot of locations. Black Swan embodies co a combination of lightweight composite materials, his, uh, his brother's speciality in a standard piston engine that sips patrol, petrol while the drone cruises on long fuel-efficient wings. This whole package will fly 20,000 feet altitude below the mass of passenger air traffic. Dronamics sees this height band as unused airspace and is also testing out a new synthetic aviation fuel, which it claims will allow carbon-neutral flights. And uh, the 350 kilogram, 750 uh, pound cargo load of the Black Swan equals that a small that of a small courier van. We're connecting city to city, not door to door. Dronamics uh, plans to operate Black Swan, Black Swans like an airline, Europe's first drone cargo airline. It will charge by weight or charter, cutting out the cost and time taken by vehicles that crisscross Europe to deliver essential goods and parts. Um, is there any? I don't see a picture of a drone. I see this thing, but it looks like a concept. German logistics giant Hellman is poised to begin using these drones January. Uh, Janu Jan Klein Lasthusis is in charge of, an of this initiative, and has and he has spent a long career in air uh, freight. Mr. Klein Lathus doesn't see conventional air freight facing competition from this, uh, these new designs, but thinks the drones will allow Hellman to fly goods that previously traveled by road, connecting Greek. Islands by cargo drones is one of Hellman's media ambitions, said Mr. Klein Lathus. Or Lathus. Um, the drones will be more frequent than ferries, and we can use them to break down deliveries into several packages so we can increase the frequency of deliveries. They represent a big change. They offer speed and flexibility. Dronamics claims a 2,500-kilometer uh, 25, uh, or 1,500-mile range for its aircraft, putting the whole of Western Europe within range of any EU-based cargo hub. 
While smaller versions of the drone are already flying in Bulgaria, a small scale, a full scale prototype should be airborne in early 2023. So this looks like a full scale, um, you know, uh, prototype here. Dronomic says the European airspace regulator has been ke uh, kept apprised of its planned operations and given it to a limit uh, to operate. Hellman is uh, talking about beginning to fly them during 2023. Mr. Klein, Leth uh, Mr. Klein, Lethuis or Lethus shares the opinion that earlier drone delivery models were a dead end. I never believed in the idea of parcel drones. That's why we're working with Dronomics. It's not an Amazon delivery uh, type idea. Uh, so cargo drones have uh, attracted attention to Bristow, a U.S. group that operates helicopters around the globe. Bristow has sign uh, signaled its intention to buy up to 100 cargo drones from a California company, Elroy Air. Um, what's going else on in here? It's kind of closing out the article. Yeah, to stay um, current crop of passenger carrying electric vertical takeoff at, uh, at Evtol design features and electric all electric mo power. The Elroy carrier drone. Cargo drones will run on a hydroelectric engine, a small turbine that generates electrical power and runs off aviation fuel. Uh, fuel. The hybrid design means the drone can refuel at existing facilities rather than relying on docking stations for electricity, and it burns less than a third of the fuel as a helicopter uses. Pure electric power means you're constrained by where you put the charging base, says David Stef uh, Stepanek, a former U.S. Marine Corps helicopter technician who is a, now a Bristol executive studying cargo drone operations. Bristow is looking at using the Elroy drones to back up its operations in locations such as West Africa, where the offshore's oil industry needs to shift equipment, and Bristow wants to reduce the cost of using helicopters and fixed-wing aircraft. Elroy Air has been working on large, multi-engined vertical takeoff drone uh, that can uh, heave 500 pounds, load up to 480 kilometers, uh, load up to 480 kilometers, 300 miles. Elroy's air Airs Kofi Asante Asant researched autonomous trucks at Uber's freight arm. He points out that the idea of a cargo pod attached to then decoupled and then decoupled from the chassis of an autonomous truck also worked for a cargo drone. He describes relations with the U.S. Air uh, Regulator, the Federal Aviation Authority (FAA), is very positive with the with the test flight for full-size drone planning during 2023, at over eight kilometers, 26 feet in width for the drone, named uh, Chaparral. Is large uh, is large by uncrewed civil drone standards, but that size uh, but size is the point, says Mr. Asante. It can then carry a hundred times the payload of a small UAV unmanned aerial vehicle. It's comparable. It's uh, it's comparable to a small plane in terms of loadout, but operates as a fraction of the cost of a helicopter. You may not be ordering a flying drone delivery to your home address anytime soon, but it looks like. It looks as if the death of one drone team has opened the way for another more practical concept to thrive. And this should usher in clean shaven leadership at Dronomics. So that's uh, that about some technology piece, uh, the cargo hauling aircraft with no pilots on board. I have one more piece of article news here before I'm going to close out the stream for the day from the BBC and Tech News. In the BBC, UK's old tree critical to climate change fight. So this is from uh, some general news here in science news. UK uh, from uh, writer Victoria Gill, science correspondent for the BBC News. UK for forests lock away twice as much planet warming. I don't know if they're the writers, but they're the people who are introducing these articles, right? Um, Maybe they have writer editors for them. UK forests lock away twice as much plant warming carbon as previously thought a few study, a new study reveals. Hmm. The study using layers, lasers and 3D scanning showed that old trees in particular were critical to fighting climate change. The research mapped almost a thousand trees and with them wood in Oxfordshire. Oxfordshire? We found significantly more carbon stored there, said Ms. Dr. Kim Calders from Ghent, uh, Ghent University. An accurate calculation of the amount of carbon trapped in UK woodland could help inform decisions about how to manage it in addition to highlighting the cost of the environment of losing that woodland before 3D scanning techniques were available. Weighing a tree would mean cutting it down. The latest research published in a journal um, of eco ecological solutions and evidence produced laser, uh, la laser scanning maps of each tree and converted those into a model that gave a measure of each tree's volume which the scientists used to calculate the amount of carbon captured in each tree's trunk and branches it showed that a patch of uk forest weighing about twice as much as previous calculations 
calculation suggested. When you know the density of the woods, you can convert volume into mass, explains uh, Professor Matt Disney from UCL. About half of that mass will, uh, will be carbon, half is water. With them, wood, one of the most scientifically studied forests in the world, is typical to UK deciduous woodland, meaning the area is weighed by scientists afforded, affords an accurate estimate of the carbon value of forests across the UK. There has probably been an underestimation of carbon in UK woodland, but prob uh, probably across Europe as well, said Professor Calders. In, uh, so the incalculable value, as well as being important ecosystems, healthy forests remove planet warming carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. Professor Disney says the new findings show that for every square kilometer of woodland loss, we potentially lose about almost twice the carbon sink capacity we thought. As Professor Robert McKenzie from the Birmingham Institute of Forest Research pointed out that above ground forests are an important but temporary temporary uh, store of carbon that can help us get past the current climate emergency. Ultimately, he told BBC News, we need to stop emitting fossil fuel carbon and lock carbon away for centuries to millennia. Some of that can happen in forests and other soils, and the rest will have to come from carbon capture and storage. Uh, for the near future, though, Professor Disney said his research has serious implications for our understanding of the benefits of protecting trees in terms of climate change and the complex structure of mature trees in particular means they play a role that is very difficult to replace by simply planting more trees. The value you have in large mature trees is almost incalculable and so you should avoid losing that at any cost regardless of how many trees you think about planting said Professor Disney. Those large trees are incredibly important. So that's that the last piece of news article I had here from the BBC on UK's old trees critical to climate change fight. All right, and um, that's going to be it. I'm going to be closing out the um, stream for the day. So if you're on the YouTube side, please do subscribe, turn on the bell, uh, bell notifications. Here to blockchain tech and finance news. Here, uh, here I can point a little better here. Here to blockchain tech and finance news. I have all these articles that I've been reading from. Um, the links in the recap videos on the YouTube side. I also stream this on, on Twitch. So we're streaming on Twitch. And after my streams, um, uh, throughout the weeks, I will be doing gaming content. Just kind of get back into the streaming and... Um, broadcast system reset up and calibrated um, as you can see um, around here so great chows cheers peace be with you have a great and safe day i'll be back with new fresh news very very soon